What's up guys, welcome to Free Dive Passion. Today we're going to talk about RV dives and FRC dives. So what is an RV or an FRC dive? Well, they represent different lung measurements that you have. An RV, which means residual volume dive, would mean you would exhale all the air you can out of your lungs before you go down. So you might take a breath in, and then breathe all the air out of your lungs and start your dive from your residual volume. Now an FRC dive means functional residual capacity. This is your neutral lung. So to find this position, you would take a full breath and then just relax. Um, the air will just flow naturally out your lungs. The point where the air doesn't go out anymore without you creating tension is your functional residual capacity. So it's kind of like a sigh. It would look like this. That's my functional residual capacity. For a lot of people, it might sound crazy to do a dive without taking a full breath. But within freediving, things tend to get tricky around your residual volume. That's when um, you're going to start to get negative pressure inside your lungs. And that's also when equalization is going to become much more difficult. Now, if you had to do every single dive with full lungs, then that means you've got to go below 30, 40, 50 meters before you can start training the things which are difficult for you. If you start to dive with less air in your lungs, you'll reach your residual volume much sooner. This allows for less nitrogen accumulation and shorter dives which in turn means that you can dive more to help um, train your equalization or build your flexibility within your trachea and lungs. Like I already mentioned, starting a dive with less air in your lungs means you can um, reach your residual volume at a much shallower depth than what you would if you were doing a full lung dive. But is it a perfect simulation? The answer is no. On a full lung dive, as you go below your residual volume, the air in your lungs is going to start to be compressed smaller than what your lungs are. To compensate for this, blood um, pumps into the blood vessels within your lungs. Now this isn't a perfect adaptation and it takes time for the blood to enter into the blood vessels in your lungs and compensate for that negative pressure. Even on a full lung dive, it's still one step behind the negative pressure in your lungs. That's why you won't be able to keep on equalizing. Because the pressure change is much more dramatic at shallower depths, the air in your lungs is going to be compressed much faster than what it would if you reached residual volume at a deeper, at a deeper depth as you would with full lungs. So if you start with re your residual volume or your functional residual capacity, the air in your lungs is going to be compressed much faster than what it would if you did a full lung dive. And the problem is your blood shift is not fast enough to cope for this increasing negative pressure. Because of this, there's a much larger feeling of discomfort on a residual volume dive or a functional residual capacity dive than there would be at the equivalent depth on a full lung dive. To illustrate this point, let's use the example of a diver who dives on full lungs and reaches his residual volume at 30 meters. The volume of air in his lungs is the equivalent to just taking a full breath out at the surface. So the equivalent to doing a residual volume dive, an RV dive. Now, if this diver did a residual volume dive to 10 meters, the volume of air in his lungs will be half of his residual volume. If the diver dived with full lungs, the equivalent depth for the amount of air he will have in his lungs would be 70 meters. So to be at 10 meters on residual volume, or 70 meters on full lungs means this dive will have the same amount of air. The main difference is on the full lung dive, your body has much more time to adapt and much more time to bring blood into the blood vessels in the lungs than if you was doing a residual volume dive. This means on the residual volume dive, there'll be a greater amount of negative pressure and discomfort. So in reality, a 10 meter residual volume dive will be much more uncomfortable and potentially more dangerous than a 70 meter full lung dive. And in my personal experience, the level of discomfort I get from a 10 meter residual volume dive is far higher than how my lungs felt when I was at 100 meters. This means we have to be extra cautious 
while using FOC or residual volume diving. It's very important to be aware of the feeling of pressure building up within your trachea, which you'll feel down the center of your chest. It's very important to avoid big movements. Descend as slowly as possible, giving your body more time to adapt. You should turn on the rope um, and your dive based on feeling, not based on depth. It's important to avoid contractions, to progress very slowly over a period of days and weeks, and not to do too many FRCs or RV dives in one session, somewhere between two and six um, RV dives or FRC dives below 10 meters would be plenty. I've noticed, and it's been noted by a lot of other divers, that it's not wise to use RV or FRC dives as warm-ups before a deep dive. We've seen people squeezing on their deep dives when they use residual volume and FRC dives as a warm-up. If you're prone to squeezes, then I would say it's better to steer clear of FRCs and RV dives. And it's very important to relax your stomach and your intercostal muscles as you dive. If you're using RV dives and FRC dives to practice your mouthfill, then you should be aware that if you're actually good at mouthfill, your fill will last much longer than your flexibility will allow. So there's a potential for injury. For this reason, it's, much, it's very important to end your dive going off feeling when you start to feel an uncomfortable pressure in your chest. Don't just go until you can't equalize anymore. To compensate for this and to allow me to train um, the various stages of my mouth fill, I'll use different amounts of air for each FRC dive. So if I wanted to train them um, switching from T to K to H, then I'll only fill up the air behind my T-lock. I won't even fill my cheeks. And then I'll practice that. If I want to practice switching from cheeks to um, K, then I'll just put a bit of air in my cheeks and then pretty quickly that air will be compressed and I'll have to switch to K. So I compensate it in this way. As my flexibility starts to get better, I'll be able to just take a full mouth fill and work through the whole mouth fill as I descend. So what are the advantages of using RV dives and FRC dives? Well, one is it builds just mega flexibility of your trachea, more than what you could get from deep diving and more than what you could get from lung stretching. It allows you multiple opportunities to practice your equalization and to build your flexibility. It causes less nitrogen buildup. This negative pressure in your lungs, which you feel, is much more uncomfortable than deep diving. So if you're used to this level of um, negative pressure, diving deep will feel very easy and you'll be quite comfortable at depth. It's also great for training relaxation of your stomach and intercostal muscles. In the past, I've run training cycles both using FRCs and without using FRCs. In fact, my deepest dive um, was done without doing any lung stretching or FRCs. But now I'm starting to see the true value of both lung stretching and FRCs, and I've incorporated both of them into my training now. I see it as a great way to build and maintain flexibility and practice my equalization. Especially as a coach, I don't always have time to do deep dives. This allows me to maintain my skills without having to do them deep dives. So that's it guys. As always, I'm not here to tell you what to do or what not to do. Just give you the information you need to make your own informed decisions. Until next time guys, take it easy and dive safe.